Good afternoon, uh, um, and thank you to uh, David for inviting me to this uh, uh, extraordinary event. I see so much uh, knowledge of data protection gathered in the room, uh, uh, um, probably uh, about as big a concentration as you can get in, in this country, and it's, um, it's a very welcome uh, uh, scenario to have uh, so many people here to, to discuss these, uh, these issues. Uh, Jude raised at the beginning of this session the question of the, the broad impact of uh, Google Spain. Uh, um, th there's absolutely no doubt that, that Google Spain has a, a, an impact across all forms of uh, internet services uh, in a way that it, it is at the moment uh, completely unpredictable. Uh, 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 and um, the, the, it doesn't work in, in, in very clearly in practice. I mean, I, I've just been uh, asking a few people in the course of the day how it is that Google ever manages to uh, process sensitive personal data lawfully. Uh, uh, um, the answer is it doesn't seem to be able to, but it seems to get away with it. Uh, 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 now, how's that? Someone ultimately is going to uh, try and work that through in the courts or the regulators. But I'm, I'm going to focus uh, in my presentation on, on a much um, two very narrow issues because... Uh, um, from, from my experience of litigating these um, issues in the English courts, uh, I think they're possibly of more uh, of wider significance. But I just want to deal with two aspects. The first is uh, um, it's been promised, and I'll do it. Uh, uh, the case of Viddle Hall and Google, which judgment was handed down today um, by the Court of Appeal. Uh, um, the, the, for those of you who don't know what the case is about. It's to do with something called the Safari workaround uh, and by which uh, um, Google was, was able to obtain uh, browser-generated information from users of Safari, uh, um, <coughs> either deliberately or accidentally. I think there's an issue about that. Uh, um, but uh, obtaining information which they shouldn't have been obtaining. Uh, um, effectively, a class action has been brought in England and, and it's necessary to serve those proceedings in Google in California, on Google in California. That, that means under the English rules of procedure, you have to get through certain gateways for service out of the jurisdiction. A, a, and one of those gateways is to demonstrate that you have a claim for damages. Uh, um, so there's a data protection claim, <coughs> and the barrier to a claim for damages is Section 13 of the Data Protection Act, because, as I'm sure everybody knows, that requires you to prove effectively uh, um, economic loss before you can claim damages for distress. None of the claimants in this case could prove any economic loss. And so if, if Section 13 was read literally, their claims for damages under the Data Protection Act were bound to fail. Uh, in, incidentally, uh, the civil claims brought in the United States over the same issue all failed, uh, were all struck out because they, they were unable to prove economic loss. It's a, obviously a very different set of, um, uh, of, of laws, but the, the same, crystallised on the same issue. So the, the issue, the central issue in this part of the judgment for the Court of Appeal was, was whether or not Section 13 covered not just economic damage, but also what was referred to as moral damage, in other words, uh, distress, uh, uh, um, damage to reputation, and so on. Uh, um, the Court of Appeal, uh, um, it was accepted by everybody that read literally uh, um, Section 13 had that effect. Section 13, there's no way around it. Uh, uh, Section 13 required as a necessary condition a proof of economic loss. Uh, 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 and there was, a, there was a, uh, an interesting debate uh, as to whether under ma leasing you could strike words out or you could strike uh, uh, um, whole sections out. I, I, I said, well, I thought that was impossible. The master of the role said to me, why? Uh, <laughs> and I was slightly at a loss as to how to... Well, it's, it's absolutely obvious you can't go striking out bits of acts by a process of construction. In the end, he accepted that. Uh, uh, um, so so, so th that route was closed, uh, but the, what the Court of Appeal accepted was that, first of all, that the word damage in the directive, in Article 23 of the directive, covered both material and non-material damage. Uh, they based themselves partly on, on, I mean, partly on, on other uh, decisions concerning other directives and concerning the meaning of the word damage in the treaty. 
but partly on the general point that, that actually what the Data Protection Directive is about is, is protecting privacy rights, autonomy, dignity, not economic rights. And it would be bizarre if you, your rights were interfered with, but you had no, uh, uh, no remedy uh, no, because uh, only economic damage was protected. So they got to the position of saying, yes, damage in the directive does mean uh, um, moral damage as well. Uh, yes, Section 13 doesn't uh, uh, um, properly reflect the directive. So what do we do about it? We can't construe it out of existence. Uh, and the answer is we disapply it because uh, of, section, uh, of Article 47 of the, of the Charter, which provides for an effective remedy. There is no effective remedy. EU law takes precedence, so we disapply Section 32. So effectively, uh, what they've done is uh, the, 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 the process which is done in, in constitutional courts, I think everywhere in the... I always say this, everywhere in the world apart from England and New Zealand, I may have missed somewhere out, uh, 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 but in, in other words, they strike down uh, laws which are incompatible with uh, more basic and fundamental laws. And effectively what they've done is strike down Section 13.2, which has a massive practical impact, because what that means is now, in respect of data protection breaches, for the first time, you can unarguably claim damages for distress whether or not you've suffered economic loss. Now, does that demonstrate uh, all as point made this morning about the courts being more... Uh, uh, I think she mentioned Vidal Hall in passing as an example of the courts being more activist in this, in, in this field. Uh, um, I, I suspect not, is, 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 uh, uh, certainly in relation to the English domestic courts, uh, um, but I do think they are becoming more constitutionally aware, partly because of the Human Rights Act, and um, are more aware. So, so, so applying the Charter uh, um, doesn't now uh, um, seem something uh, outrageous and foreign as it might have done even five years ago. That, that they, they think that that's something that is perfectly. If, if that's where the law takes them, that's where they go. So the the, the decision is also important because. Uh, um, it, it, that there's an important discussion of what constitutes personal data. It w was mentioned this morning that there's not much of discussion of that in, in Google Spain. There's actually a bit more of a discussion of that in, in Viddle Hall. And, and, and in particular, they accepted that you didn't have to name someone to, to identify them. I mean, an obvious point, but Google argued to the contrary. Uh, uh, um, so so the, the, um, that's, that's the first thing I wanted to deal with. The second uh, issue is, is one that... Uh, arises out of Google Spain, uh, and it concerns the the question of what you do about uh, um, systematic problems, because Google Spain envisages the paradigm case is reporting an individual URL. I mean, Mr. Costeggio reports that the there's a URL which links to the news, to, to Vanguardia and contains this information, and asks Google to delink it. But what happens if you get the, the not atypical situation where someone is putting l large amounts of the same personal data onto the internet, Google groups or uh, um, Facebook or onto YouTube or whatever? Do you, is the position that you have to notify Google of every single URL uh, um, or, or can you get Google to take some more automated procedure? That problem arose in a case called Heglin, which I noticed in, in the notes for this event uh, was mentioned by uh, David. And in Heglin, there was some un unidentified uh, person who, who we, we never worked out what was behind it, but they were putting on, on, the, uh, on all kinds of places on the internet thousands and thousands of postings which said that Mr. Heglin was a criminal, bastard, Nazi, paedophile, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, and they went into a lot of detail about his Nazi, paedophile, criminal activities. So every time you did a Google search on him, uh, th th these were the first ten results, was this abusive material. Uh, um, we, sent, uh, we originally used the, uh, the procedure under the Google Spain 
what Google called the Costegia procedure. Uh, um, uh, uh, Google, I think, on the first occasion took 58 days to respond. Uh, uh, um, by, by the time the case was almost due in court, they were responding in six hours. Uh, I'm sure that was a coincidence. Uh, 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 um, the, the, but but the, the, issue, the issue in that case, and, and the case was settled, so it was never resolved, uh, uh, um, but the issue has also come up in other cases, is whether Google can be uh, compelled to uh, um, introduce an automated procedure for detecting particular groupings of texts or particular images uh, and blocking those uh, proactively without, without being notified of individual URLs. That itself gives rise to an issue, which I don't think has, has been mentioned today, uh, but, but, it, but is a, a, a very important issue as to the relationship between the e-commerce directive and the data protection directive. Uh, um, Google's position is that the e-commerce directive prevents courts from making proactive orders to, 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 so that they have to uh, block particular images or particular groups of text. Uh, the position of people who brought the claims against Google is if you read the e-commerce directive, it says this doesn't apply to data protection. Uh, uh, um, now, that's an issue which has, which has not been uh, uh, um, litigated in, the, in, in any court in the, in the EU, save for one case in the Italian uh, Court of Cassation where in the pre-Google Spain, uh, uh, where the reasoning... If, if I can dignify it with that word, uh, 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 um, occupies half a page. Uh, uh, and, and it may be easier to follow in Italian, but in the English translation, it's impossible to work out what they mean. Uh, uh, um, but but they, they have said, for, for reasons which are, are, are entirely obscure to me, that, that um, the, the, um, uh, the e-commerce directive, despite its express words, uh, uh, um, takes precedence over the data protection directive, and therefore Google don't have to take things down unless they have knowledge of them. Uh, um, anyway, unless you identify the, the, the particular URLs. Uh, but but that's, a, that's an issue which, just as a matter of practicality, is going to come up more and more because it's one thing... Uh, uh, th th there are, uh, another, another problem is, is images. I mean, for, for example, uh, uh, um, the well-known case of Mr Max Mosley. Uh, uh, um, there, are, there are images relating to him, which, which are all over, uh, extracted originally from a video taken by the uh, undercover person working for the News of the World, but, but pop up all, all the time. And, and what he wants is an active procedure. And as some of you may know, he brought proceedings in France and in Germany, uh, um, where the, both the French and the German courts have made orders effectively requiring Google to take proactive steps. Uh, um, th this is not a Google Spain question, this is a privacy question, uh, but he's now brought proceedings in the English courts or, or, or under, under Google Spain seeking a, a similar sorts of orders. Now, how, how those cases will ultimately pan out, the German case has just gone on appeal and judgment is due in five weeks' time, I think. Uh, uh, um, the French case is also going on appeal and the English case is continuing. Uh, uh, but but those, are, those are kind of practical issues that, you, that, that arise once, once, you, once the, courts, uh, uh, the, the courts in the EU uh, um, uh, exert jurisdiction over Google, as they plainly can uh, um, as a result of the, uh, of the Google Spain uh, decision. So, so uh, um, I'm going to I'm going to end I'm going to end there, but I'm happy to answer questions about either of them later on.